Today on Hearts of Heroes, a late night fire erupts in an apartment complex. The center of the building was fully engulfed in flames. It was clearly a huge volume of fire. Leaving people inside disoriented with no escape. Fire was burning its way down right there at the stairway. And it's only one way in and out. And later, everything was going well until I heard the alarm go off. Unlikely heroes are called to action when a senior living complex goes up in flames. There's many residents that had walkers and wheelchairs. I ran upstairs. I just knew I had to go up there and get them people down. These heroes would go above and beyond to save the lives of those in need. wants to wake up in the middle of the night to the sound of fire alarms blaring. It was even more terrifying for the folks who live on an upper level of an apartment complex in Washington. They realized they were trapped with no way to escape. As the blaze grew, blocking exits and pathways, firefighters would have to use every resource and rescue maneuver to save the lives of 30 terrified residents. I heard the sirens outside, looked out into the hallway. It was filled with smoke and it's only one way in and out. The center of the building was fully engulfed in flames, 30 to 40 feet high flames coming on the roof. I told my wife, we gotta go out through the window. We couldn't go on the roof because of the sparks, so we went through the hallway. I'm grabbing her hand, I touched the wall, it just crumbles. There's fire coming out, it, it's bright red, so I put my body between her and that hole in the wall. And I started freaking out, panicking. She wants to be in a burning building. Auburn, Washington is a suburb of Seattle. It's got a population of 90,000 and a rich American history. Auburn was founded in 1890, and the fire department was founded around that same time. Take a stroll through the White River Valley Museum, and you'll see the city's beauty on full display. Or just walk down Main Street. You'll find buildings that have been here for centuries, and they've got a unique footprint. We call it a taxpayer meaning that below is has businesses, and on top it's a residential. Christina Sharp and her mother lived in one of these upstairs apartments. It was an old building, about 100 years old. There was just one hallway with apartments on either end of the hallway. That narrow hallway would be Christina and her mom's only hope of escape when an electrical fire ignited their building late one night in July 2021. I was listening to something on my phone, and then when I heard my neighbor's fire alarm going off, that sounds like something's wrong. And so I looked down the hallway and it was filled with smoke. I had to wake my mom up and I started freaking out, panicking. I was afraid for my life. I, I knew the building was old. Uh, we didn't have sprinklers in the building either. Because of the building's advanced age, up-to-date sprinklers and fire alarm systems weren't mandated. Today, all modern buildings are required to have those systems, as well as multiple exits. Out of nowhere, Peter McPherson woke up to panicked cries outside his window. I heard somebody yell, oh, there's fire coming out the roof. I got my wife up, I looked outside the door, and it was smoking the building. So I just told her, let's go, we gotta go. But there was one major problem. Fire was burning its way down right there at the stairway. There's a stairway in the middle of the building, and it's only one way in and out, no exits. By now, a call went out to the Valley Regional Fire Authority. Looked like it was a city block wide, just straight up above the trees. Coming up, with the only exit on fire, there are a few options for a safe rescue. I seen a piece of the roof drop down and it's right there at the stairway. And later, a high-rise apartment fire calls for heroic action from the staff. There were flames coming out of the window. It was chaotic. I just knew I had to go up there and get them people down. But first, a tip to help you avoid a fire starting in your house. Some fires are out of our control, but did you know that a majority of avoidable fires start in the kitchen? 
Walking away from cooking food can quickly lead to dangerous and deadly flames that can engulf your home in a matter of minutes. If you have to walk away, be sure to turn the stove off before you go. Sometimes leaving your stove unattended can result in much worse than a burnt meal. That's why we urge you to practice cooking safely. In July of 2021, a fire erupted in an electrical shaft of a business and apartment complex in Auburn, Washington. The folks who lived in the top floor were trapped. And you've seen the flames coming down, and it was right over the stairway, and I thought, well, we can't go through that. It was clearly a huge volume of fire. I could see just the center of the building was fully engulfed in flames, 30 to 40 feet high flames coming on the roof. Right in the middle of the building, there was a doorway, and the stairway was fully involved with fire. That was the only entrance and exit. So we have to make that tenable. We have to put the fire out. This is the way that we're probably going to bring the majority of people out. I had a diagram of the building, and I knew exactly where the apartments were, how they were laid out. I knew that there was 13 departments on floor two. I didn't know how many still were occupied, how many had come out. Inside, McPherson and his wife knew that they needed to escape. I opened the door, and then all of a sudden, I seen a piece of the roof drop down, and it's right there at the stairway. Peter and his wife did the smart thing. They had already developed an emergency plan in case of fire. Me and my wife kind of did a pre-thing when we moved in on what happens if it, there was ever a fire, how we would get out. So I told my wife, we got to go out through the window. Underneath, there was a jewelry store that had the awning. So we got on the awning, and so we're waiting for the fire department to come. I heard someone, looked up, and there were people coming out of a window. They're, help, help. So I yelled back, hey, get ladders. We're going to need to get those people out. Firefighters helped Peter and his wife off that awning and straight to safety. But Christina Sharp and her physically disabled mother were still cornered by the fire. We finally we're like, hey, we just need to get out at this point. And I didn't think she could climb the roof. So we went through the hallway. I remember it's two ladies appearing at the top of the stairwell. And I, I yelled, stop! I was like, no, help me. <laughs> I mean, I, I know they wanted us just to be safe because they didn't want debris falling on us. But in that panic state, you don't think correctly. As I'm helping them down, I put my hand on the wall to help her by. My hand went into the wall and it was just charred, just red hot. There's fire coming out, it's bright red. I have the protective gear on, they don't. So I put my body between her and that hole in the wall, help them down, all the way down and out the door. I think what Captain Henson did through the aggressive fire attack he did, literally saved those two people's life. Firefighters battled the blaze throughout the night. The next morning, in the smoldering rubble, they discovered a pair of unexpected survivors. I pulled off a piece of sheetrock that had dropped down in a cardboard box, and underneath that cardboard box, there was a long-eared bunny. <laughs> and as soon as I touched it, its ears started moving, and its tail started moving, and I picked it up. It had been there overnight, but it survived. As I was going into the building to take my photographs of the interior, Sure enough, in this little aquarium, there was a, uh, a bearded dragon, and my partner and I grabbed the lizard, and we exited the structure. Yeah, <laughs> two lives saved that day. <laughs> Thanks to the bravery of first responders, many lives were spared that day. Those firefighters went above and beyond. They all received the Medal of Valor. They did a great job. To see him there in a burning building, Dude, you're risking your life to help us. It's just amazing that they did that. I would say thank you in a hundred different ways if I could, you know, because without them guys, a lot of people would die. You know, there's no question in my mind. Coming up. We've got a building full of seniors. Some of them can't walk. We see flames just going all up the wall. It was crazy. Whenever a fire breaks out, 
We can always count on first responders to come to the rescue. But in those frightening moments before help arrives, it's often ordinary people who jump in and become extraordinary heroes. All of a sudden, a fire alarm came on. I ran upstairs. We see flames just going all up the wall. And immediately, we just start knocking on doors, telling people they need to get out. There were flames coming out of the window. It was chaotic. Just knew I had to go up there and get them people down. Ypsilanti, Michigan is a small city between Detroit and Ann Arbor. The city is home to the Michigan Firehouse Museum, built on the location of an original 1895 firehouse. Today, the three fire departments around Ypsilanti share resources and support one another. The city of Ypsilanti, as well as Ypsilanti Township and Superior Township, all respond to fires in each other's jurisdictions. Clark East Tower is a senior community that has 200 apartments that provides affordable housing for seniors in the area. Life in these towers is easygoing. It consists of a complex of apartments and common areas where residents and staff are like one big family. I appreciate each and every one of them, I really do. But the dedication of this family would be tested in February of 2021 when a sudden fire erupted in the seven-story apartment complex. That particular day, we had a snowstorm come in and it was like 12 inches we got that day. So we were out there shoveling snow. Everything was going well until I heard the alarm go off. I had seen it was on the sixth floor. I ran upstairs and that's where I met my coworker, Keith. Before we can even get down the hallway, this lady coming out of her apartment, choking and smoke coming out the door. And we see flames just going all up the wall. It was crazy. My first reaction was like, we got to get these people out of here. Call 911. We have a fire at 605. And immediately, we just start knocking on doors, telling people they need to get out. You could tell it was a big fire. Because the alarm was going off. You couldn't take the elevator. Some of these people can't go down the stairs real good. So we had to help them go down the stairs, seven flights. I was very nervous. I'd never been in nothing like that before. I just knew I had to get them people down. When living in a large building, it's important to always have a predetermined, clear evacuation plan. You never know when a fire will strike. Meanwhile, dispatch went out to the three local fire departments. As we were coming down Clark Road, we could see the column of smoke coming over the roof of the building. So that indicated to us that we had a good working fire. The biggest difficulty, I would say, was the people going down the stairwells while we're going up. We had four firefighters in full gear going upstairs while 100 people are coming down the same stairwell. Property manager Robin Warden was at a dental appointment when she heard about the fire. I got the first injection to be numbed and my phone rang, and they said the building's on fire. So I got in the car, drove back home. I seen the black smoke just rolling out of the top of the building. I had three residents on that floor that had oxygen, so my first call was make sure the firemen know that this unit, this unit, and this unit have oxygen going. Ordinarily, we'd get everybody out of the building. There was no way, because it was freezing, the snow was coming down, so we had to just think. So I says, open up the multi-purpose room, open up the library, get them in there. I was stressed because I didn't know what I was going to do. It was devastating to them. Naturally, the residents were in a panic. Coming up, everyone inside Clark East Tower faces an uncertain future. Everybody was displaced. They didn't have anywhere to go. But first, this safety tip. As a restoration specialist, I've seen just about every type of fire you can imagine and apartment blazes like we just saw are all too common. That's why it's so important to have an escape plan for any situation in which you might find yourself. Pay attention to where exits and extinguishers are located. And if you're ever caught in a building fire, stay low and under the smoke. Get down, get low, and get out. It only takes a moment to check out your surroundings and it could potentially save your life.
When a fire started in a seven-story senior living facility in 2021, the entire staff jumped in to make sure that the 200 residents made it out. You had maintenance, you had housekeepers that helped evacuate those rooms and get those folks out of harm's way and get them downstairs. After many hours, firefighters were able to put out the blaze and keep it confined to one apartment. But just because fire damage was kept to a minimum didn't mean that the residents were out of the woods. The tower, their home, was uninhabitable. The fire wasn't the problem. It was the water damage after the fact. Water everywhere. It just came through the electrical outlets. It came down through the walls. Anytime there's an abundance of water, electricity is exceedingly dangerous. Never, ever go near a live power cable if you're standing in liquid of any type. When we found out that we had to evacuate the building, it was a bomb dropped on us. Out of all the 200 and something residents that we had, only like 60 went to family. Everybody else was displaced. They didn't have anywhere to go. My role was to find housing for those that had to be relocated. We were lucky enough to find three hotels all next door to each other that we were able to house our residents in. They had buses out there already, which I thought was a phenomenal task to do that quickly. And we got rooms very quickly. With everyone safely relocated, our sponsor, Belfour Property Restoration, got to work transforming the facility. We had nine units on every floor of from the sixth down to the first affected from the water. You had to be real careful of where you walked and, uh, as far as trip hazards, that type of stuff. Electricity, you know, we had to make sure we got our rubber boots on, rubber gloves. You had to make sure nobody gets electrocuted. Every week we were turning back over a floor to the complex. After just a few months, the building was as good as new and ready to welcome everybody home. The day the last resident came home, we had music. They had signs held up saying, welcome home. And that was a great feeling. To be able to see the smiles of our residents that they were able to return home to a clean, safe building was just the best ever. After the restoration was complete, Sheldon Yellen of Belfort wanted to give a special thanks to the family of heroes at Clark East Tower. Well, here we are once again with some real life heroes. All you did was put 200 people first and you didn't stop, you didn't think about it. And you have proven once again that not all heroes wear badges and uniforms. I do have to say that, Robin, you in a dentist chair, showing up with a numb mouth you are the first numbed hero that we've ever come across on this show. On behalf of all the residents that have been saved and brought to safety, thank you all, and we are honored to be in your presence. Standing here today looking at you, it occurs to me that you guys gave about 25% of all you got to give. Bring out 25 pizzas, please. In fact, looking at you again, I think you guys gave closer to 50%. Bring out another 25, please. And in fact, looking at you again, it occurs to me that you guys gave 100%. Bring out 50 more pizzas, please. And really, looking at you guys one more time, I think you gave every bit of 200%. Bring out another 100 pizzas, please. Let's feed every resident in this building and beyond. Thank you, 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 and thank you. In terms of heroes, I feel that our maintenance guys definitely go above and beyond. They immediately responded to the fire. They immediately began the evacuation process to make sure that our seniors were safe. We stepped up to the challenge. These seniors, we know they need our help, so. We did what we had to do.
We really hope that you leave us today inspired by these stories of real and amazing heroes. And let it also be a reminder that emergency preparation and planning can save you in a time of disaster. Thanks so much for watching. We'll see you next time right here on Hearts of Heroes.